everybody, welcome back to Grandma's Corner 2020, where you have been enjoying all kinds of free videos, and I have been staying sane by making these videos for you. Today we are going to be making a sweet treat, and it is a keto-friendly cookie. Get excited! So this recipe, you're going to be using almond flour, which you can find just about anywhere, and a sugar substitute. And remember, I love monk fruit. So this is my go-to sugar substitute. And it does call for powdered sugar substitute. So I powder mine by putting it into a blender or a grinder of some sort. I happen to have a grinder, a small one that I use. And this comes out to be a nice fluffy powder. And sea salt, you're going to need a fourth of a teaspoon of that. You are going to need baking powder, an eighth of a teaspoon. You're going to need some vanilla extract. You are going to need two or three teaspoons of milk. I'm not a milk drinker, so I always keep dried milk on hand. And then when I have a recipe that calls for milk, I just put a little bit in water and I'm good to go. And I don't know if you saw my video on how to make sugar-free chocolate chip, chocolate chips, but here they are. That's what I made the other day. And let's see, coconut oil. That's the other thing you are going to need. And I think that's about it. Again, here is the recipe. If you want to pause that and take a snapshot of it, then there you go. All right, so we're going to mix the dry ingredients first. So it's, and I'm doubling this because if, uh, if I'm gonna make one, I may as well make two and put the oven on and, and save cookies for later. Yeah, right, ha ha. So here we go, one cup of almond flour, and you're going to add to that two tablespoons of the powdered sugar substitute, and a fourth of a teaspoon of sea salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda. So when you mix that up, please make sure that you look for all of the little chunks of baking soda because you don't want to bite into one of those. So get all the lumps and bumps out and make sure you don't see any of the white specks. All right, I'm going to put that off to the side. So that's a lovely little mix right there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna preheat my oven to 325 degrees, which is on already. And now I'm gonna mix my wet ingredients. So I took all of the coconut oil and I melted it because it sure is a lot easier to mix in with the dry because my house is so cold, this is like solid in here. So you gotta melt it down a little bit. Now to that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add my vanilla extract. And remember, I doubled the recipe, so I'm gonna put in two teaspoons rather than one. And then it calls for two to three teaspoons of milk. And I like to go on the light side to begin with, because if you put too much, then you gotta add more flour. So I'm gonna put in one, two, and because I doubled it, I'm gonna put in another two. And then if I feel like I need to have a little bit more of the liquid, I will go ahead and do a little bit of that. So I'm gonna mix now my coconut oil and vanilla and the milk, and then I'm gonna pour that in here. Notice I have not put in the chocolate chips yet. I'm gonna put that in after I have this mixed up because I wanna make sure that the chocolate chips look like chocolate chips and they're not covered in the powder of the flour and look white. I want them to look like chocolate chips. So I put those in at the end. All right, that's gonna make a nice batter there. As you can see, it's all coming together and that's gonna be really easy for me to ball up and make the cookies. All right, so I'm mixing in now. Oops, the daisy. <laughs> You know, when I made the chocolate chips, in the center of the mold, there's a large circle. That's the prize you get for making your own chocolate chips. So I don't think I need that in here right now. Oh my gosh, these look so good. So the nice thing about going keto is that you don't use refined sugar. 
No sugar, no sugar. You use a substitute. Monk fruit is a fabulous sweetener. It does not raise the glycemic, uh, on the glycemic index, it doesn't raise your blood sugars. There's no calories, no sodium, no carbohydrates because the carbohydrates are offset by the four sugar alcohols in there, which they wipe each other out. And it's a lot healthier. It's non-GMO and a nice plant-based. It's not that horrible refined sugar that is in everything, folks, and very toxic. Okay, that is a beautiful, beautiful cookie batter. So now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna make sure that my pan is covered with parchment paper because I don't like scrubbing more than I have to. And this parchment paper really is lovely for picking up messes, anything that drips. All you do is you just take the paper and wad it up and off in the trash it goes. All right, so this double batch right here will make about 24 or 25 cookies. So I'm gonna be taking a dollop of around that size and I'm just gonna ball it up and then I'm gonna put it down on here and I'm gonna give it a bit of a squish and then go ahead and try to shape it a little bit. They're not very big. I don't like them very big. Not that I don't wanna eat them, but I don't wanna eat five big ones when I would be satisfied with five small ones. Again, there's a pretty good heaping teaspoon and I'm gonna put that down and give it a good squish. And I'm gonna do that to the rest of them. And when I'm done, I'm gonna show you what that beautiful pan looks like. Hold on. Alrighty, so I am back and look at that beautiful tray. So I lied, this is actually four by five, so this is 20. These are a little bit bigger than I made them last time when I got 25 out of them. But you know what, you make them whatever size you want and make sure that you're flattening, flattening them down and maybe try to get them all about the same thickness. Now, another thing that I am gonna recommend, and I found this out when I used parchment paper the first time, you wanna make sure that you trim off the excess uh, parchment paper because it tends to burn. So those edges, you don't want them to go past the pan. Trim them off, because you don't want them catching on fire inside that oven. All right, those are ready to go. Now, uh, as I said before, monk fruit as a sweetener is a fabulous, fabulous substitute for refined sugar. And there are other ones too, like stevia and um, erythrol and, and some of these other ones as well. Sorry, I guess I'm just throwing things away when I'm on camera, I'm not even realizing it. I feel like I'm talking to just a friend. Well, you are my friend. Uh, anyway, um, so those chocolate chip, chocolate chips that I made too, and here's that leftover disc, those were also made with monk fruit. Monk fruit's not that cheap, a little bit on the expensive side, but it's a much, much healthier version of the sweet sugar that um, most of us uh, who love to eat uh, need, seem to need to have a little sweet treat from every now and then. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven and they're gonna go in for about, oh, I don't know, 10 to, 15, 10 to 12 minutes. And what I did the last time is I checked to see around the edges when they started to brown a little bit. So I tended to cook them a little bit longer than the time before. And so they weren't quite as uh, raw inside. So I will show you what that looks like when I get back. Ta-ta. So here we go, folks. I took out the lovely cookies and you can see them sort of and they are now all cooled off. So I can now plate them. And I got these a little browner than the last batch, but they're still so incredibly moist, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. So even if I break these open, they're still very soft and chewy inside. Now, the other thing that I was thinking about doing with these is next time chop up some nuts to add to the batter. So pecans maybe, or some peanuts, uh, maybe some almonds. I would probably chop them up pretty tiny, not dust-like, but you know, little tiny 
uh, chunks and add that to this beautiful keto cookie. So I want you to enjoy this recipe. Again, one more time, let me show it to you. Keto cookies, and you can modify this or add to in any way. Uh, make it just as is because you know what? They're pretty darn good. So thank you for joining and thank you for subscribing. And I look forward to doing yet another free video. Have a good day.